Hello and welcome back to the Third Age Total War Divide and Conquer submod for Third Age Total War and we are now looking at the second tips and tricks video, now looking at the kingdom of, should I say, the capital of Harad, who is owned currently by the Serpent Lord Kuzaimar. So, what can I say about the faction I hate the most out of all of Divide and Conquer's many, many factions? Our enemies not will much. suffer. Not much at all, actually. <laughs> I'm kidding. I do. I do know quite a few things. Firstly, you start with a pretty Orders. large army, and you are losing a lot of income to begin with. But you do have some of the, the one of the strongest starting presences in the game because well, you, you only start with one region. Before Haran used to have all of this land, this landscape here. In fact. This might make things easier. This is why I did it for the last one. You can actually view all the different regions that are currently surrounding us. And all those regions are right for the picking. And a unique thing about Harad and Rune, because they were given a, 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 re a not a rebuff, but a, um, a redo, where they lost their, their regions of Lest, uh, Enam Enamada? I'm going to butcher these names, sorry. Uh, Mataran. Elgaia and Rubar. They had all those regions, but now they only st start with Mistrand. Obviously, once you um, end the turn on turn one, so it's going to do that quickly to display that the faction of. Oh, I made a mistake. I made a mistake. This turn's going to take forever if I don't toggle. In fact, no, it doesn't um, follow. I was, I was thinking for a second then, I, I messed up big time. As you can see, the map is slowly wide, uh, building up because some factions, like the Ardenaeum, that were made to start with only their start starting region when you're not playing as them they get their two regions that are neighboring them rune gets those all of their homeland regions including the far off region to mordor uh, angmar gets some regions to the west madunadai and claim their capitals yeah a lot of things happen in the turn one um i, I can't think of the actual word of what the um, mod leader called it but I, I, I just call it the, um, the AI filling up the map. However, we don't have this kind of start. We need to take everything by force. Yes. Everything we do has to be using brutal, brutal force. And the best way to do that is to just claim the regions around us. Because you may think, oh, oh no, we've got massive supply. stacks of our weakest, cheapest it's units. And then we've got some okay units that don't really do much. But you haven't seen the generals yet. Yes. Your general is probably one of the strongest generals in the game, uh, on par with the Swan Knights and the once, elder, the once famous Eldering Way Noble Cavalry, although they've been nerfed to be only footmen now. We have the Black Snake Guard, 11 attack, 14 charge, and 21 total defense, and we'll go into more why that's so proficient in this faction of Harad compared to another faction like the Ardenaeum, because obviously My uh, the, those stats aren't as good as the units of Umbar, but it is good to note that it is a massive change because Umbar, well, the Ardenaim are not the same as Harad. You're going to have your own strengths and weaknesses, and I must admit Harad has a lot of good strengths and is perhaps is the most aggressive faction, closing similarly to Dunland uh, and the Ardenaim are the exact opposite. They are a very defensive, very um, very tanky nation, where the Haradrim are focused nearly solely upon aggress aggression but it does have some very strong skilled against mount units to not just beat their counterparts of Dol Amroth, but to very easily su um, surpass anyone who would think themselves to be horse lords. And it's, that's a bit terrifying, I'm not gonna lie. They are a very terrifying force. So, a little talk about the scripts of Harad, because unlike the Yard Nine, they have no real scripts other than the, the fact they start as a horde nation and you can go wherever you want. But with Rune, the Harad, like I said, similar, similarly to Rune, you start with a very small nation. You only have a faction capital, but you have two small armies oh, what with your Warlord Musar, some Haradrim Spearmen, some Haradrim Archers, and then Utgar with the same army, but with a little less veterancy on different units. And you can go anywhere. You are surrounded by uh, rebel regions, rebel armies. You can go anywhere and everywhere, and you will find, no matter where you are, you will succeed. Because, again, their generals yes. are so overpowered. 
And you take out um, Kazai, oh, man, and you have him Sapphire. start attacking uh, certain regions I will not as well. Waste words on just, you. just having to defeat their small armies with your general cav or cavalry generals alone, and you won't lose. Just merge all these units together and take something like Tar Al Jaffa for the odd nine ticket. Maybe go for Ankarigmir if you're really, really ballsy and want to fight some uh, Mumakil. But I would recommend going for the northern regions of Amun Eiffel, Esfala, um, and Amrun. Then maybe start going a bit west, uh, east to Karandaj and Krokmahur, although Kand is likely to take them before you. And then I doubt you'll ever get to Saikan before Kand takes it. Uh, other than that, again, t uh, Tal al is good, but I think it's better to give it to the Ardenine so they can become a more prominent power in the north because they really need it. They really, really need it, as I mentioned before in the last video. So, um, what else is there to know about them? Unlike the Ardenian, the building browser for the Haradrim is slightly... Well, it's not as restricted, but it has one ma major difference. It has a stables. It has a stables, and you have a lot of different cavalry. At the, the largest here, the Lord's Stables, you have four different cavalry units. The Serpent Guard and the Serpent Archer are both best elites when it comes to the, uh, having cavalry, but they are expensive. Not compared to the R9, but they are still expensive. Obviously, because you are the the, de the desert nation, the, f the main faction that is known to have the Muma Kill, you can get the Muma Kill recruiting network at both your capital and at Ankaragmir, as I mentioned in the last video. You can get the barracks, which again can get to level 3. You get the archery range, which again is remains at level 2. However, you are only have one archery unit that comes from your archery range. The Southron archers. And I must admit, they are... They're okay, but you have to remember, this is it. You have no archers for a faction other than two other units. Because I forgot to mention, there are, there are other units hidden in your main browser of units. But we'll go into that. Oh yeah, you lose out on the improvement ports because you're not, a, you're not a, a, a naval nation. Yes, you, yes, you start with boats, but they are very weak Balukazar, Balugazga. So they aren't as good as the... The black ships of the Corsairs, or the ships of the Numenorians, or the Elves. But again, also, you only get basic roads, or the max maximum of roads. You can't get any trade routes. Uh, food production is actually the same up to irrigation. You can get the mines like any other faction, but you do notice you have a slightly. Um, I find out you have exactly the same building income. Then, looking upon. Oh, yes, your, your main building for culture is known as the Dark Sh Sanctuary up to the Dark Temple, and that is a building that goes through not just you, but Kand and Rune. Kand's uh, building can change depending on what script you go with, but we'll go to that when we play as Kand. But, going back, uh, other than that, they have no real uniqueness other than the fact they can make the Kand outpost, which allows them to get some basic Kandish units. But, uh, they're not bad, but they're not good. It gives you a few more um, archer units. To be actually, to be fair, they are they can be a good asset because they are again, as I said, two more two other archer units. Oh no 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 no! I just noticed it isn't two different archer units. What you get is the Candish Raiders, which is the horse archer unit. And I know that Rune gets the the foot version of the Candish Raiders. But once you get this, you can get the Variag Lancers, which are another strong uh, strike cavalry unit. Which we'll talk about more in the Can video. Other than that, yeah, you'll find your roster is actually quite small. But that's because half of it's hidden. Hidden out, hidden, out, hidden in plain sight. And I must admit, they, they've done this really well to not sh uh, show this off. So as you see, your elite units are... The Serpent Bladesmen, your range units are nothing to be desired with Southfront Archers, but there is a large roster of units you are missing. The Muhad, the Trollmen, and the Hashari, and then of course the Mumakil as well, but you can get them once you have the Mumakil pits. So the way to get all of those different tribes to join your Black Serpent tribe, because basically Harad is just a massive um, amount of tribes, for those that don't know much about the history of Harad, because it's, it's not really mentioned much about the full history of Harad, but they are a a, a nation, a, a, a wide a variation of tribes, and you have to join all of these together to make the most 
of all of them together. You need to join the tribes together. Similar to how Rune has to do exactly the same things, being the golden dragon. You are the black serpent, and you must not rest until you have the, fo the, fo uh, the factions of your kin brought with you. I believe the first faction you can get is once you get, uh, claim two or region. I'm, I'm not, I'm not going to say I know this off by heart, but I do know you go. You get the Muhad first. We get a unique Muhad general who has a specific Muhad bodyguard. Then you can get the Muhad tribesmen and beastmasters, and you can get them. I don't remember where, which, which building you can get them from. But I have a feeling it's just going to be the um, the basic town guard building. Then you can get the troll men. The troll men are a brutish force and we'll have a look at them in more detail when we get to the other side of the video and for those that don't know much about the troll men i hate the troll men i showed them off slightly in the r9 video when we looked at the enslavement uh, script but they aren't uh, I, was gonna, I was gonna say they're not much to be desired they are very much to be desired not only do they yes they have weak armor but they supplement that with their shields, which even their javelin troops have. And they're amazing um, infantry forces. They are your aggressive and defensive unit all in one. They will hold the ground against most and will actually defeat most other nations' elites in hand-to-hand -hand combat because they are just so tough and so hard to beat down. And then you have the Hashari, your assassins, the dark cult that, again, worships the servant the Dark Lord, and they are, mm, they are really good. Not, not only do they give you an extremely powerful archer unit, which you def desperately need, and they're on par with units like the Barufios, Bar uh, Barufios Rangers of Ar the Ardenaim, but they're not classed as Rangers because they're more assassins than Rangers. Their whole job is to Yes, they, yeah, yes, basically their entire role is the same as a ranger. You hide in stealth and then you shoot um, and ambush and just kill everything that stands in your way. But the Hashari do it in a different way, I feel. In the fact that they can... Oh, I, I, I can't really tell, say, say much about them without being able to show off their actual, um, their actual stats and their traits. So yeah, this part's very, very short because there's not much else I can do other yes. than maybe... Uh, to show off what happens when you take all these. But basically, the more rings you take, the more um, of Mordor's favor you gain, and the more the tribes respect you, and the more strength you gain. And once you have enough strength, after the Hashari, you can then get the Muma kill. And that's, wh and that's when you start realizing you can go right into Gondor and just pummel them to death, and they cannot stop you. The Muma kill are devastating forces on the battlefield, and very few tactical geniuses are, have good ways of getting rid of them and the AI are not tactical geniuses they will fall easily to the great might of the great beasts of the south so after having a bit of a breather because that, that that took a bit out of me so as I said this is your starting uh, region finer bell um, unlike the region of the R R9 the Black Palace does allow you to get diplomats. Every other faction you can get a diplomat except for Canned. I don't know why they just never made it so you can get a diplomat. Which is I find very very strange. But, but again your building browser only loses a few things compared to the Black Numenorians. That's because they are extremely cent uh, cent centered around their growth and complete domination. You're more of a South Rom nation. You, you're used to living in the deserts. So you don't know how to make massive trade route roads or have massive ports because you're not a seafaring nation you just uh, roam the lands and raid and pillage and kill and you do it really 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 well i've i've never played as a rad i'm not gonna lie but i have um seen some of the some of them in action Our and enemies will suffer i still think they're a bit overpowered at times i've never been able to defeat her in fact no i i, I lie there i managed to defeat harad once but it was playing as a Northern Dunedine after about 300 turns, after claiming all of Mordor, all of Rune, all of Khan, all of Harad, and all of Umbar, and it was ages. It, Har Harad is a massive force to fear. If, they, if they're not surrounded by Dol Amroth, Gondor, if Khand sides with the Istari, that's another threat you have to deal with. However, you will, um, you will note, I actually do start allying with the R R Denium because in the first turn I didn't show it, but um, in fact I think I did show it. 
uh, the RR Denyim are immediately declared allied with Harad and I think Kand, no, Harad and Mordor, and immediately set as enemies to Dol Amroth and Gondor. So, they, so the RR Denyim do actually know what they're doing. Because obviously, in, like in the Total War sub mod, some AI just sit around doing nothing, just claiming rebel regions and then fighting whoever they can. Yes, that could be more fun, but if you actually want to do that, just use the Total War sub mod. No one's going to stop you. So yeah, that's all we can talk about. Um, oh yeah, other tips and tricks I can think of. Um, again, for expansion, I said try going um, north into these three regions, then start pushing east before Khan can um, get his grubby fingers on all of these regions, because you will need them to get your Haradrim tribes. Try and get Ankaragmir. If Umbar beats you to it, don't feel salty about it. Worst case, um, worst case scenario, they end up not being able to hold on to it for long, because it is a Yes it's, yes, it's a region that can make a lot of money, but not as much as it used to. So you could actually buy um, the, the R9 out of Ankaragmir in the future, because you do make money very quickly, and your units are very, very cheap. I'm not going to lie, um, some of your um, second tier units, 270, 250, 250, 300, those are, and those are good stats for how much upkeep they are. They're actually on par with Elven um, tier. Uh, stats and cost about 80 sh uh, chevrons or sellers or yes. whatever they're called and then you look at their general's bodyguard 26 and only 250 upkeep that's a bit busted that is a bit busted if you have if, if i'm gonna say it um fully it they are really strong and i forgot to mention them um, for the trollman and the hashara you do get unique generals as well unfortunately you don't get a unique muma kill general that would be stupid and even more likely to die e more easily than most others S similar to the how uh, the Lokan of Rune used to die a lot because his chariot was... Um, chariots don't work, work well in this game because they count as elephants in a way. But yeah, other than that, I can't think of much other advice to give other than push for Don Amroth, but make sure the Ardenine can still move up. Don't keep the Ardenine out of the fight. If you do, you're losing a very prominent ally that can defeat and conquer a lot more than you would fit, imagine. Have them try and take Lin here and Mephast, while you can try and go up north taking Tarnos, Ethling, and going for Don Amroth and Etheland. Yes, that blocks them off, but at that point, you don't need them anymore. The second you've defeated Don Amroth, um, uh, the RR Denyim are no longer useful to you because they are too s they, they're too slow in the mid to late game for beating Gondor, which Gondor spams a lot, and especially if they're not, if Gondor's actually beating Mordor at the time, you will have a lot of trouble being off Gondor for a, for a while. Once you start pumping out more Muma kill and start getting your elite units out from having the, the region requirements, you will find your life is a lot easier. But another thing to note, um, I do believe your, um, your tribesmen units are restricted to Harad. So once you start pushing up into Gondor, you'll find your uh, recruitment pool is shortened, but you still get your elite serpent units, which are still very important to you. I'm fairly certain. Let's just check that. Yep, you can still get the Serpent Blazemen, still get the Serpent Guard. I'm, I'm not saying that they're, uh, they're worse than the Trollmen and Hashari, because I'd say they're about, about on par, but you will lose a bit of diversity the further up north you go. If, if Khan sides with the Astari, you can go fight them. That's always a fun battle to, uh, to do, because you will get these um, very strong desert units, or desert factor regions, and I do, do believe this does count as Haradrim territory, so you can get your Haradrim tribesmen units from here as well. Not um, Don't uh, place any bets on that though, because I do not know for sure. But I think that's everything I need to talk about with the tips and tricks on the battle map. Just go up north, just push, and if you really want to have real, really good fun, um, de um, declare war with the Arden Iron, declare war with Khan, declare war with Harad, declare war with Rune, and you'll become the ultimate, fa uh, the ultimate evil in the east, the, the southeast, and you will... Oh yeah, Harad just gets stupidly busted near the late game. Any any faction that can get things like Great Beasts, Muma Kill, in and they get them out, and they still have, have, have a massive income flowing through. They won't get stopped. They will just keep going on and on and on, and it is a nightmare for anyone who has to fight them. I remember years and years, well not years and years ago, a year, about a year and a half ago, I would always play as Don Amroth and I would always hold Lin here and I'd just fight against stack after stack after stack of Haradrim. 
and they would never stop. Every turn, the, the, se the second one, one army was defeated, another one would appear, and another one, and another one, and another one, because they don't stop. You cannot let Harad take over you. So if you're ever fighting against the Haradrim, the Haradrim nation, don't let them bully you. Beat back. Start being aggressive against them, because their weakness is their defense. You beat their defense, you, uh, you beat their aggression with your own aggression, and their defense is appalling. They have no zero, zero armor stats, zero defense stats. You can play super defensive against them, but that's, that's when they're in their element. But they act similar to the Ardenai, and they can surround you. And they do it a lot better because they have a large cavalry roster. And their generals are cavalry as well, so that's even an even bigger push. And, oh, <laughs> it's evil. So that's enough babbling on on the bat on the campaign map time to go to the battle map see you in a few seconds so then as you can notice as you can see they have a large roster themselves in fact two units larger than the R R Denian, uh, not including any other units uh, from canned so I've split these into a few more tiers and I, I think I did it with the last one we've got our yeah. trash then we've got our starting tier then we've got our uh, middle tier mainly um aor then we've got our uh, strong elites then we've, then we've got our strong um barracks event then we've got our even stronger elites and then we've got our overpowered units <laughs> not gonna lie no, no matter what no matter what time in the game is the, the black snake got us overpowered and we'll go into why once we start going for every single unit so we start off with the Haradrim Spearmen. So starting off, compared to the Corsair Raiders, they have four attack, three charge, and four total defense. They can skip uh, the skill tron, although that's a useless uh, technique because it's use it has no use in this game anymore. But they are, they already start off skilled against mounts. They're good in the desert, and they have a so four attack and four total defense. That's pretty decent. Say there's 202 of them. I'd say next to the Corsair Raiders, which are basically their rivals. They have the edge only because their main enemy, Dol Amroth, is mainly focused around cavalry, and it's better to have spearmen than just um, sword and board units. I mean, not find not even sword and board, just a scimitar blade. And then we've got the Haradrim archers. archers, which are three, 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 and two. So as you, can, as you can see, they have very, very poor defenses, but extremely good, even for early tier trash very good attack stats a missile attack of three uh, compared to the corsair archers two if i'm not mistaken um but losing a bit of defense and mostly in defense skill these guys are not your um, typical corsair that's been fighting on the seas and like a pirate these are uh, simple tribes in that have um, flocked into harad or uh, been living in the harad for their entire lives and are now coming up to the north wearing their very exotic garbs, and unfortunately, as good as they are resistant against heat, um, and they're not as good as protecting you from the arrows and blades of your uh, rivals. But what, what they are best best at, being in their massive, um, uh, I'm going to finish there. I don't remember what to say. Their massive formation, 202 of them. They are even with a small shield like that. They're still somewhat competent at taking arrow fire compared to your elite units. Or your better units. Archers. So yeah, archers, spearmen, nothing to be desired. But to be honest, there's always going to be that, that, that one unit that's just trash that you use for very, very important uh, formations. But these guys are definitely oh, your... Not de they're not defensive, which is odd because they do have a spear and most spear wielding units are meant to be defensive. But, eh, when in Rome, or when in Harad, and now we look at your, um, your, the units you'll be making for most of your campaign, no matter where, you, no matter uh, who you're playing as, or, or where you're starting at in Harad. So the Saffron Warband, attack of six, already doubling, or ne near doubling the strength of the Haradrim Spearmen, uh, one up on charge, but a massive increase in defense skill and armor, and a, sh and a be much better shield. So already. From, they get additional seven armor just from one st uh, stat, and these can be recruited in most the areas of Harad as um, uh, mercenaries because the recruitment cost is various. And whenever you see a unit that has a recruitment cost of various on their stat screen, that tells you they can be recruited as the 
Ugh, I keep forgetting the damn words. Mercenaries. That's it. And now your bread and butter for Haran, the South Rom Pikeman. You may think, a Pikeman unit, this early on, for an aggressive nation, that doesn't feel right. Well, I'll tell you now, these units, as good as they are, defending, they can be even better when attacking, especially against any form of cavalry, which Pikeman excel at no matter where they are, no matter who's controlling them, even if it's left standing nowhere. Um, they are full. Don't let their simple garbs dis um, disguise the fact that they are really good. Shoot them down at any opposition, at any occasion you can find them. Because playing as a cavalry nation like Dol Amroth, you will find these pikemen are your bane in every part of the game. You, these will be your first target against for arrows, no matter who you're playing as, no matter when you're playing as, um, if you have archers or not. You will want to have archers against Harad because these pikemen are. They are the bane of most nations, and that's not understanding anything. And then the slightly better archer unit, the Saffron Archers, your current best unit until you can get the Hashari, which are a long, long way away. But to say they've got a missile attack of 4, a melee attack of 5, and a total defense of 5, yes they're not the best in hand-to-hand -hand combat, yes they're not the best when shooting, but are they still good at what they do? Absolutely. 152, 152 arrows firing at an average a me, me, a missile attack of 4, that cannot be underestimated. That cannot be underestimated one bit. I underestimated these archers so many times back in the day, and I regret it now because I, I've started to realise this is a deadly unit. Everything of her, Anything of Harad is deadly. So if you like a faction that knows how, its way how to kill and sh um, maim and butcher anyone and everyone, you want to play as Harad, because they do it well, and they do it really, really, awesome, and it's really appalling when you have to fight them, and then you suddenly lose a lot to their South Rom Lancers, which is, again, another bread and butter unit. You will find you want to use these every now and again, not in large numbers, though. If you put too many of these South Rom Lancers into an army, and you try to control all of them, you'll lose more men than you, would, than you wish you could avoid, because similar to how I use the Linden... Uh, the, um, the Sindar Cavalry, if you have too many of these kinds of units, then you slowly start mellowing down, you forget they're, an aggressive, they're, they're meant to be an aggressive type of unit, and they're better on their own than they are against others. Because they, oh, don't mess with South Rom Lancers is what I'm trying to say. Even against the, even when playing as the Ardenaeum, this is a very good unit to consider in every army, because, you, because um, they need cavalry, and you have that cavalry to give to them through enslavement. Don't think for a, for, for, for a second, because this unit is easily acquired, along with the pikemen, that they are bad, because that is the exact opposite. And now we look at the best of our post-barracks event units, or pre-barracks event units, the Harandor Mercenaries. Once again, a very similar unit, with exactly the same unit as we showed off in the RR9 video, but unlike with the R9 where they already have the Savages that do a lot of armor piercing damage. This is your first armor piercing unit and you can only get it from Harondor, which is why once again I said head north because north of your capital is Harondor. You take it, you get these mercenaries and you will find climbing over Gondor and, your, and the other rebels will be a breeze. It will be a complete breeze. I'm telling you now, don't think for a second these, these, this unit is weak. Because they are even better for Harad than any other nation. And, oh, they are. They are evil. They can be so evil oh, at times. And now we look at the second unit of... The second cavalry unit of Harad. And a rather rude... Uh, not a rude. <laughs> I, I, I read the crude and then I, I lost my train of thought. The camel riders. Yes, we have camels in this game. And, oh... Boy, you do not want to play against Don Amroth with these because they scare horses, camels, and wogs. For those that don't know, wogs are classed as camels in Divide and Conquer. Camel riders scare horses, so that's a, a frightening nearby cavalry. It's not as good as an actual frightening effect, but the fact they can scare horses weakens most strong cavalry nations. And you're fine one for the for the entirety of the early game, even past the barracks event. Don Amroth. And to a limit, to an extent, Gondor, because they do ha they do like to spam out uh, cavalry from time to time. This unit 
You don't want, again, you don't want to spam out lots and lots of these because their ability does not stack. They can't make, like, if you had a whole army of camel riders against a whole army of other cavalry, you're not going to make them instantly run away the second you're, they walk up to you. Camels aren't that good. But they are decent in smaller numbers. And talking about smaller numbers, we now come to the first uh, tribesman unit you gain from the tribesman script, the Muhad. So we look at the two of them. They are both javelin wielding troops. One of them is on foot, one of them are on camels. So the Muhad tribesmen, skill against mounts, effect against armor, and yeah, they're really good. Four javelins, so they're slightly better than most javelin troops at their tier. But they're, and as you can see by their iconic. Uh, face masks, they're the warriors that ride at, also ride atop the Mumakil in the battle for Pelennor Fields. A 9 missile attack, this early on in the game, once you've taken a few regions, and then you've got a cavalry version of that that does 10 missile damage, and they're both effective against armor. Again, you've, you've got effective against armor units in the Horondor Mercs, but again, they're restricted to Horondor. These units are restricted to the deserts. Well, they used to, they, they should be. They're, they're the, the beast masters require a desert region because they require their because they need camels and camels only come from the deserts. You can't just start throwing buckets of sand onto Gondor and say it's a desert region. Unfortunately, unfortunately, you can't do that. Let's get the show. But yeah, the these sun. units, even not you, even without their missiles, are on par with your the Southron warband. It's even more total defense with their leather clad armor, although some of them aren't even wearing full breastplate. Some of them are just letting their chest stick out. Don't know why that's a thing, but yeah, apparently um, uh, re uh, revealing skin is a thing in the deserts. Doesn't surprise me in the slightest, honestly. It does get pretty warm in the deserts, as you can imagine. But yeah, the uh, stats of, in fact, no, most of their armor is in defensive skill. I just, I just realized. With the Southron Warband, their defense comes from their armor, and then mostly into defense skill. Their armor comes from, again, from massive defense skill and even less armor. So, how, how do you beat Harad's early tier everything? Archers. You defeat this entire front row just by using archers, and it is stupid how well it works. And that's why you have counters to that in your cavalry, because you are weak. You are weak without your cavalry, because you have so few. Um, Archer killing units that can really push in and really do some damage. So now we come to the barracks event. And I must admit, you don't, you don't have many units that aren't <laughs> restricted by um, your tribesman uh, scripts. Because this, th this is two more tribesman scripts, and they are slightly worse, in my opinion, than the serpent units, but only because of one thing very, very weak armor once again. The Hashari and the Trollmen both have very weak armor stats. Where compared to the Serpent units, they ha they start to get a bit of armor, but hardly any. But it's, it's, it's still very very light. So let's start and look at the Trollmen. These units used to run, um, inspire you know, uh, nearby troops by using the War Chant, but they removed that because the the AI always used the War Chant and never sent the Trollmen. And that actually, I'm not gonna lie, that got me a few wins um, back in the day. If the Trollmen charged in with everything else, with their 12 attack and 8 defense skill, they're not going down without a fight. They're not going down without a massive fight. And even against archers, they're good because of their 4 um, hit shield. And they have 2 hit points each. All these Trollmen have 2 hit points, which makes them even, which makes them stronger than most units. Because you need to kill them twice, technically. The amount of hit points they have, you have to kill them that amount of times. That's why Trolls are so good, because they have like 8 to six to eight hit points each. And then we come to the second unit, which again, ma uh, wielding a massive shield, the Trollman Hunters. And as you see, even though they are a javelin unit, they are still as good, if not, a, if only, only a little weaker in melee than their warrior counterparts. And then, oh yeah, they also require desert regions. Yeah, require desert region, requires desert region. But they are skilled against mount. This is your first skilled against mount unit at this tier because they have spears as well as javelins. And oh my god, they, oh. The amount of times I've lost a whole unit of cavalry or a general to these strawman hunters back in the day, it's ridiculous. I'm gonna keep saying back in the day and just, just referencing back to my time as Dolamro. So, so you can understand the festering hatred I have for this nation. It's, it festers at the very heart of my, the very 
the very center of my soul. It burns. And then we have this unit, a brand new unit to Harad, actually. Because apparently you need more troll men, troll men champions. So they're skilled against mounts, effects against armor. They frighten nearby enemy infantry as well. So lose a bit of their of their me the melee strength that the trollmen warriors have, but they gain it in uh, charge bonus and they're effective against armor, which the both forms of the trollmen before them do not have. Yes, they lose the shield, but but an uh, amazing seven armor, going from an armor of two to an armor of seven and an eleven defense skill. They have more armor than the units that have the shields. Like what? How's that fair? There's 89 of them. You think a unit like this would be cl uh, classed as berserkers and would have, you know, a smaller unit, Ross? A smaller unit because they all have two hit points as well. How did they not think this unit would be busted? Yes, they require a desert region, but do you know how many desert regions there are? Quite a few. And do you know how many they can recruit in the, in, in the middle to late game to, after turn 100? Four hundred from every region. It's, it's evil. They made Harad one of the most evil factions in the game, and only the AI knows how to really pull them off better than most people in the most people in the community, in my opinion. So now we come, ugh, getting out of the the, the the tribe I hate the most. I'm just gonna send them all the way over there. I don't like I don't like looking at them anymore. We come to the Hashari. The, the only units I actually think um, really fit the assassin lifestyle of the in the, the game. So first we have the base Hashari, can hide anywhere, rival in deserts, have a powerful charge, and of excellent stamina. So these are similar to most like remember the Girthinen from all the way back into all the way back from Lor the days of Lothlorien? Well yeah, these are a slightly be better version of them. Well no, actually I say they're about on par with each other. So an elite tier um, human unit is on par with a early tier um, elven unit. That's terrifying. Don't think that that's hilariously bad because te it's terrifying. If these Hashari were to fight um, the Girth Men one on one, you'd find them be more Hashari later on in the game. And they're not restricted to the deserts either. You can make these units can be made anywhere. Unlike the unlike the Muhad, unlike the Trollmen, these units are, are, are can come as readily available as your Serpent Bladesmen. And yes, they are a more aggressive unit. So remember the. Um, all those aggressive units they ha uh, we had for Umbar. Well, that's all of them put together into this one Hashari unit. Because, oh boy, they do not give respite to their foes. They, they give them a quick and painful death. Or painless. It, de it depends on their, on their mood at the time. But again, like all um, Harad units, they're reliable in deserts. So they just get a massive boost when in the deserts. But they do actually get a weak... Uh, they do I get, uh, actually get a malice. Um, they only get malice in snow. So only in winter, out of the deserts, are they weak. And that's a very small what? portion of the of the um, of the turns in the game. It's a quarter of the turns in the game, they they're slightly weaker than uh, being stronger. And then we come to their archer variants, the Hashari Shadows. Like I said, they are on par with the Arupiol's Rangers. In fact. Do they have the exact same stats? Except they're not reliable in forests and deserts. They're only reliable in deserts. And again, they're weak in snow. But they do have... Oh, yeah. Then uh, Again, they're not classed as rangers for two reasons. One, their accuracy, accuracy is not very high. It's not very long. And they have nowhere near as many missiles as the elites or the, the warriors of the Black Numenorians. This is a assassin-style archer unit, which you just send... So let's say I was wanted to kill this unit here. I would have this unit, uh, if, if I was standing behind a Rajan unit, these two would clash. This unit, like most, like, 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 like it's like a crossbow unit. It would stand to the side and it would fire. But unlike crossbowman units, these units have even greater accuracy. And they used, to, oh, and they've also got locked morale. That's the thing to notice about the Hashari. They're one of the only human nation, uh, one of the evil men um, units to actually have locked morale. And that's really important because that means they will never flee. My they will never um, tarnish in their duty. They will fight and fight and fight until they have nothing left to them. Which is scary. Because things like the Abrazanim, they will flee after a, after they see their general die or in most instances once they're surrounded and don't stand a chance. But then you realise these the court of the assassins bring out these extremely powerful 
uh, backliners which have locked morale so you never make them flee you're going to be stuck with them unless, until you either kill them which is going to be difficult because of their higher defense skill and massive attack but they're also meant to stay in there and keep fighting they are oh don't mess with them do not mess with them if you can and now we come uh, this is taking a long time i'm gonna have to find a way to make this a little bit quicker we come to our serpent um, tier which i get again i do prefer over the other units just because you can get them basically without needing the tribesmen the tribesmen uh, scripts but obviously that doesn't mean you should wait till turn 61 until you actually start taking regions and this, this, this is a thing of saying um these units are available from the very beginning no that's not right <laughs> i'm gonna stop i'm gonna stop talking about that and start going into serpent blazeman so pretty decent stats 12 attack 20 defense that's the highest total defense of any unit in your faction other than your general so yeah you start to realize why this unit is busted for this faction 127 of them, of 12, 12 attack, 20 melee defense. They're on par with the Abrazanim Nardi Tarik, except they don't have armor piercing, they don't have better defenses, but they are still a good frontline unit. Again, you have zero defense, true, uh, true defensive options. You need to play aggressive in every way possible. You can never be the, the, the defending faction because you have no units that have good defenses. Your, your strength comes from your attack. And that attack can go up to a, a total of 16. No, not many factions can, have a, uh, can say they have units that have 16 attack. Not, not many at all, in fact. Especially a sword and board unit. Especially comes to the Serpent the Guard. You're in, in the, um, the bar by, after the barracks event, this unit will be your replacement of the Southon Lancers and the Camel Riders. Because at that point, you won't need them to scare horses because they're scored against mounts and they aspire nearby troops this is the unit you Had want everywhere cavalry. yes they're expensive yes they're difficult to get around yes they're evil 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 the cavalry against anyone who's fighting them but they also have their the one weakness that every faction of every unit of Arad has very low armor stat for being on a horse so again armor piercing not the best against them for any archer unit and they won't fall immediately but they will start to take some casualties they're good at what they're good at what they do and they try their best with what with what armor the the tribesmen of harad have which work in the deserts but not so much in the mainland and then we come to the uh, horse archer variants the second well technically the second horse archer unit because of the beast masters the serpent archers um, very similar to the Beastmasters. I uh, have slightly higher defense stats. In fact, I only have a one higher defense stat, but that does go all into armor and they lose it because they don't have a shield. But they are, in fact, better, better than the Hashari Shadows. Because of two things. One, they can run away they are able to run away from uh, from a from a unit uh, charging them and can still shoot back at them. The Harashari Why? Shadows, yes, they've got better missile attack, and yes, they can hide, so that means they, they can get into this perfect position. But if they get hit by anything, they're gone for. Their stats do not give them enough strength to defend against a strong cavalry unit like the Serpent Guard. But these Serpent Archers, they have... They are not to be underestimated. They're really not. Granted, not like the Shari, they don't have locked morale, so they can flee if another unit catches up to them. This takes a certain amount of casualties. But like most horse archers, they can perform the uh, shooting, the form shooting circle, which is, it's good. It is actually good. I don't ever use it with any of my units that have that can use it because I just find it, I can I can never make it work. But the AI make it work so many times, I can't, I can't deny the amount of times I've lost hundreds upon hundreds just because the serpent archers were there and were just just kept shooting into the back into the front line and back line of my forces especially those that don't have shields these are these are the pikeman killers of your nation everything else is just killers so now we come to the busted tier so the muma kill is there any reason to to to, to, to give that over them why they're overpowered do i need to mention it is because of their 60 the 60 melee attack there's six missile attack from, from all the archers on their 
the, ho the holders. They're 20 charge. They're 38 total defense. They're 14 hit points. Don't need to mention anything else. Oh yeah, they inspire troops. They're skilled against mounts. They frighten nearby enemies. They're, 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 they're limited so far that they, they can only be recruited from two regions, and that requires an expensive building. And for Harad, it requires the script to, the Haradrim script to, actually trigger. Don't ever think this unit is a bad choice because of how expensive it is, because they, oh, they are, they're evil. Uh, 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 yeah, I can't think of much else. In fact, it was so this unit was so busted that they had to make they had to give Mordor an edge by giving them the Great Beasts, a unit that's slightly weaker than Mimikil because this unit is actually stronger than Sauron. This unit, in all its all its pride and glory, the five Mimikil all together in that one unit, is better than Sauron. Do I need to explain myself any further? I hope I don't. And then we come to the general units, the Black Snake Guard. And now you can look at their stats, compare them to the base Serpent Guard. A 9 attack, these have a base of 10 attack. A 14 charge, the Serpent Guard only have 13. A total defense of 18, they have a total defense of 21. And they're skilled against mounts. Yes, they're skilled against mounts as well, but they inspire nearby troops. Technically, the general inspires nearby troops with the Rally Horn. And yes, they are they are greatly reduced in number, because if they were if they weren't reduced because if they were reduced further, they'd be pointless. But if they were given any even one more uh, horseman, they'd be busted. This is this is not only your best unit. Unlike the other nine, where their general just had extremely good stats, and could prove and could uh, prove to fight most of their other units. The Black Snake Guard beats or well, outranks every other unit in your faction. They outrank every single one. As good as the um, as good as the, the half trolls are, they don't stand much of a, a chance uh, next to the strength of a black snake guard unit in charge. They can defend themselves. They're the most balanced unit Harad has, and they're your best unit. Again, I'm not saying um, you need to use these in massive numbers. One of these units in every army is more than enough for, for what you need them for. Any more than that, and you may be overdoing it, but in the early game you kind of need that. So yeah, that is basically all the roster in my explanation because, again, I've never really used all this, this faction. I just played against it many, many times, and I can tell you from my seething hatred yeah. for them that they are slightly too good. Obviously, they start they, they start off with a weak tier of units, but to be honest, compared to Gondor's units, they actually stand a little bit higher because you can make them you can make them faster than the, the units from Gondor and Dol Amroth. And then once they start getting their tri the tribesmen, they start getting their their tribe scripts activated. They get those they get those half trolls, they get the you know, the trauma, they get the Hashari, they get they start getting using the barracks event, the serpent guard. They get they get Muma kill. Not many AI can fight against Mumakil. They can't. They, they just simply can't. Some factions with strong defences might stand a chance, but in the long run, you have one unit of Mumakil. They're going to kill over a thousand troops if it's a full massive it's a, if it's a full massive brawl. And again, yeah, as Harad, you cannot ever, ever think of being on having to play on the defensive. You cannot. You can try and make it work, but you'll always find you're just lacking that spice of defense, and they put all of that defense into your attack. Your attack is your strength. It's the main strength of Harad. You're the tribesman, the great serpent, and you'll bite your fangs deep into the, the, the bodies of your foes and slowly inf inflict your venom upon them. In time, Harad will always reign supreme. I'm just going to show that by handing all this over to the AI and showing how well they fight against some units from Dol Amroth, their natural enemy. And as you can see already, just from some of their base units, 
they have a much stronger defensive front line. They've got, and they've still got the cavalry, they're ma massive lancers, I completely forgot about. And then they've just got pikemen, they've got good archers. You can't ever think that any other faction that's Harad in the very late game. But again, the AI, the AI for Harad do play them really, really well. Because the, the aggression is the name of the game for the AI. They, don't, they can't think of much else other than we are... We are a massive fact. We are a massive army. We need to kill things. So we charge in and we kill things. And they do it well. They do it too, too well, in fact. But again, they have to play defensive for the fact that most factions playing against them will play de defensive. They don't stand much. They don't have much of a choice in that degree in that um, department. But yes, you have a lot of strong units that can play defensive. But next to any other nation, you have zero defences. You need to play the, the aggressor. Like right now, the AI is just sitting here doing nothing. If they just charged in, they could have killed half the, their army by now with the Moomer kill alone. In fact, I'm going to take up the Moomer kill again, if I can. No, I gave it all to the AI. AI it's gone now. It's to do with the AI ever wishes. So well, I hope you all enjoyed this. I hope my information, my tips and tricks have been insightful and can help you enjoy playing as the Haradrim even though I scorn them mercil mercilessly I will never play as the, the, the faction of Harad unless there's no other faction to play and yeah I, I can never I can never see myself playing as Harad I'm, I'm, I'll just play too passively oh a trebuchet just crushed two Muma kill oh and yeah that's the wrong minutes of Muma kill they're a fat body and anything from a ballista shot to a catapult or trebuchet, and they go down very, very quickly. Like, like wood to the axe. They're all like kindling. And as good as your uh, cavalry nation is, they are still nothing compared to the full might of Don Amroth, which we'll be talking about not next time. I want to get through the other two evil men nations first, but then we'll start talking about Gondor and Don Amroth, the fashions that. Did get this some is well within our grasp. And a few changes that bit around. Surely see this and but those hurt. Until next time, hope you all enjoyed. And ta for now.